Welcome to Planet Subaru, one of the largest Subaru showrooms in the world, and the only one powered entirely by the sun. My name is Jeff, and today I'm going to be talking about leasing versus buying. The things I'm going to discuss are going to involve Subarus, because that's what we sell, but the principles that I'll be discussing apply to just about any kind of car and just about any leasing or buying situation. To get started, I brought two cars, parked them in front of the facility here. The first one is a 2010 Forester, exactly three years old. The person who leased it from this put 54,400 miles on it, and at the end of their 36-month lease, they brought it back. This is a brand new Forester, the equivalent model, and you can see it's been upgraded since then, and for 2014, the Forester was completely redesigned. This one's so new, in fact, that we've left the wrapper on it. So this car, with 54,000 miles, was brought back in an optimal time from the customer's standpoint, in the sense that the tires, which are original to the car, will still pass inspection. They're starting to feather on the edges. It's not a lot of life left in them. Those are going to need to be replaced soon. It's going to cost somewhere around $800. The other thing that is going to be need, needed to be done soon is some brake work. You can see the condition of the brake rotors. Pretty rusty, gnarly in there. And I can tell without a gauge, just looking at the proximity of the caliper to the rotor, that the pads are getting pretty thin. So, we're probably going to need pads and a resurface of the rotors, maybe a replacement, definitely at the front, and at this mileage, maybe the back too. And between those two axles, if we had to do all that brake work, we're looking at probably another $800. Fortunately, the Subaru lease inspectors, as long as the car will pass inspection, are not going to uh, issue any charges for that. And in fact, the, the leases that we write here through Subaru Motors Finance are quite lenient when you return a car because they give you a $1,000 damage waiver too. So there's some um, dings and scratches on this car. It's kind of hard to tell in the video, but there's some, you know, cosmetic issues. We've got some sort of damage to the paint here. And scuffs and you can see the mirror housing is broken. All of this will fall underneath the thousand dollar level though so the customer who returned this car will pay nothing in damages at the end of the lease. Now let's take a step back literally and figuratively and think about if someone were to buy this car today. So obviously we would recondition it and if you were to take out a five-year loan on this car and we were to sell it, it would be somewhere around $350 a month in payment. You can lease a brand new Forester for 36 months for about $350 a month. So if you're walking into Planet Subaru today, for that payment, you would have your choice of an older car that you could own at the end of paying five years on, or you could make the same payment and return the car to us three years from now. So there are some benefits, obviously, to getting the new car. One that's very, very high on my list of priorities recently after just having a car accident about a week ago is that the modern car has the most modern safety technology. So just in a brief comparison between these two cars, this car, the 2014, has an extra airbag uh, compared to the older model. It also has an enhanced traction control system called X-Mode, which wasn't even available when this model was purchased or leased in 2010. Had I been in a newer model rather than the 2005 model that I was in in my accident when I rear-ended someone, I think the extra few feet 
in braking that the modern car would have saved me, probably would have avoided the accident altogether. And that's one of the biggest benefits to leasing, is that you're always in a brand new car, never longer than three years, as long as you do a 36 month lease. Another benefit is that it's much less likely to break because it's a newer car. And if it does, at least for the three, three years or 36,000 miles, the first 36,000 miles, you're under the comprehensive warranty. So you won't even be paying anything for it. Compared to this car, had the person bought this car instead of leasing it, they'd be looking at some repair bills that we discussed earlier. And anything that broke now would be outside of that comprehensive warranty and they would have to pay for it. Broadly speaking, if you're going to keep a car for a long time, you're probably going to find it financially advantageous to buy a car new and just hang on to it. Because eventually you'll pay off the loan and then your monthly payment is just going to consist of repairs. And with the Subaru, generally those repair bills are going to be relatively modest. And of course you'll have to put tires and brakes and do the maintenance things. The only disadvantage of that is, is that you're driving an older car for several of the years of the car's ownership. You know, if you buy a new car and keep it for 10 years, well in that 10th year you're driving a 10 year old car. Much more likely to break, much less likely to protect you as well in an accident. So there's definitely uh, a cost savings, but you have to decide for you based on your budget how much you're willing to put on the line in order to save that money. If you'd like to answer more, or if you'd like the answer to more lease questions, please visit planetsubaru.com where we have a dedicated page comparing leasing and buying in great detail in a side-by-side -side format. Thanks for watching.